I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it. Didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it. Give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but an eternity is in it. Greetings, everybody. My name is Dr. Willie Jolly. And yes, that's right, Dr. Willie Jolly. I know most people who now know me from television and radio and books, they say, that's Willie Jolly. But I'm very honored to say that last year, I went back to school and got my doctorate. I got a doctorate, a D-men with an emphasis in achievement. And I'm very honored that not only did I graduate from the, the uh, graduate school that day, but I also gave the commencement message. And I gave myself a good talk or two, too. <laughs> well, I'm honored to be able to be here to talk to you about empowering your future and changing your thinking so you can change your life. Let me tell you, for those who might not know me, my story. I'm from Washington, D.C., second generation Washingtonian. Grew up in Washington, attended Roosevelt Senior High School, and then went to American University and went to Wesley Theological Seminary. And I was uh, a informed guy, but I became a nightclub singer because I loved singing. I loved performing. I loved entertaining people. I sang a lot of jingles during the day for places like P. Pizza Hut making it great, and BET, Black Entertainment TV, and a mall here in the Washington area. It's happening. I've seen it's happening. I've seen mall, the happening place. I sang jingles during the day, but I made the majority of my income singing in nightclubs, singing in jazz clubs, and I became one of the, the most popular, I think, jazz singers in the area. Won the Jazz Singer of the Year, won the Performer of the Year, won the Whammy Award for Best Jazz Singer, and things were going great. But one night I went into a nightclub where I've been performing and had built into the number one night spot in the area. And the owner said, I want to talk to you after the night show. I said, great. I told the guys in the band, they want to talk. We've been selling out for six months. We got standing room only audiences. We're about to get our raise. And I walked into his office that night and he said, we loved you. I said, great. We've made a lot of money since you've been here. I said, that's great. He said, that's why it's hard for me to tell you what I got to tell you. We've decided to make a change. We love the band, but we've decided we got to get a better return on investment, a better ROI. And the only way we can do that with a full nightclub is to lower the cost. And the band's the biggest cost. And we're going to try something new that's going around America. We bought a karaoke machine. I said, but what about my bills? And I learned that night, nobody cares about your bills but you and the people you owe. And it was that night that I had a transformational process in my mind. I had to do something else. And I got angry. Actually, I got really angry because I'd worked so hard to build their organization, to build their company, to build that nightclub. And I still got fired. And, you know, many people in America have experienced the same thing. They worked hard. They gave good performance. And yet they got released. They got caught up in a numbers game. And it was in that moment that I decided I had to do something different. I took a job with the Washington, D.C. public school system as a drug prevention coordinator, talking to little kids about staying away from drugs. And it was during that year I discovered an ability I didn't know I had, to use words to communicate. And from the little kids, the teacher would invite me to their teachers association. And someone there would invite me to their church. And someone there would invite me to their company. And before long, Les Brown, the great motivational speaker, heard about this speaker in D.C who was speaking and singing and having an impact on people's lives. And he invited me to be on tour with him and his wife at that time, Gladys Knight, and we did the music and motivation tour. That led to television and radio, WHUR, every morning with the Willie Jolly Motivation a Minute, a number of television stations, PBS specials, and then books. It only takes a minute to change your life. A setback is a setup for a comeback. Turn setbacks into greenbacks. An attitude of excellence. And then chicken soup for the Christian soul. And now we are now traveling literally around the world doing television, radio, Sirius XM, because I realized that you're going to have some setbacks. But at some point in your life, when you have a setback, you've got to make a decision. You can either wor worry about your fears or you can rely on your faith. And you can either let stuff happen to you or you can decide that you're going to take control over your future. Today, I want to talk to you about how you can start to live your dreams and live a life that will profoundly impact not just you, in your family, but generations yet unborn. And I'm excited about being here today to talk to you, talk to you about how to live your dreams, make the future better than the past, and to live the best that could be possible for your life. Because everything's possible if you can believe. So you just got to believe that all things are possible to them to believe. One of the keys in life is that you've got to be willing and understand how to turn your setbacks 
into comebacks because you're going to have some setbacks not maybe not might you're going to have setbacks murphy's going to come visit you anybody heard of murphy's law murphy's law is anything that can go wrong will go wrong at the worst possible time and murphy has your name telephone number and a piece of paper and he's coming to your house sooner or later i don't know when he's coming but i know for sure he's coming in fact i was speaking in norfolk virginia one time and a very dignified man came up to me after my speech and said young man murphy doesn't come to visit me so he got a room at my house <laughs> You're going to have some Murphy moments. I talk about setbacks. I talk about how to turn them into comebacks. I talk about my story of being fired and replaced by a karaoke machine and going on from there to start writing books. And then uh, as I was writing books, things continued to grow. And as I said, Les Brown invited me to be on tour, and that led me to television and radio uh, with a syndicated radio show, Sirius XM uh, radio show, daily television shows, PBS specials, my books, It Only Takes a Minute to Change Your Life, a setback set up for a comeback back, turn setbacks into greenbacks, an attitude of excellence, and chicken soup for the Christian soul. But let me tell you where it all ended, or at least came to a, a foremost conclusion that was so profound. In 1999, I was speaking one day in Dallas, Texas. My phone was going crazy. Urgent, urgent, urgent. What's so urgent? I called my office. So what's so urgent? Toastmasters International needs to talk to you. Toastmasters, that's the big speaking organization. What do they want? They say it's urgent. I call Toastmasters. They say, Mr. Jolly, we've been awaiting your call. We just want to let you know you've just been named one of the outstanding five speakers in the world for this year. Former winners include Colin Powell, Norman Schwarzkopf, Nelson Mandela, Margaret Thatcher, Christopher Reeve, Les Brown. I said, what? I said, you sure you got the right person? My name is Willie Jolly. They said the one in Washington, D.C., yeah, who wrote the book, A Setback, A Setup for a Comeback, yeah, you're the one. But those are big dogs you're talking about. I'm not a big dog. I'm a little dog. I speak for school kids and for colleges and for corporations and trade associations. I speak for churches. I speak for conventions. I speak for even people's family reunions. I'm a little dog. And a lady said something I'll never forget. She said, let me tell you something. If the little dog keep yapping loud enough and strong enough, big dogs start to hear about you. Moral of the story, just think if I never had a setback. Just think if I never gotten fired and replaced by that karaoke machine. You're going to have some setbacks. But a setback is nothing but a setup for a comeback. But I not only share that message with people in the general marketplace, but with a lot of companies and corporations. Most companies and corporations now know me for the help I had with a little company you might have heard of called Ford Motor Company. In 2006, Ford was on the brink of bankruptcy, and they contacted me and said, we need your help. I worked with Ford in 2006, 2007, and 2008. And as you might remember, Ford in 2009 was the only one of the big three automakers to re be able to reject a government bailout. Since then, they've gone on to have billion-dollar quarters. What changed? They went from losing a million dollars a quarter in 2005 to making a billion dollars a quarter in 2006. Did the economy change? No. In fact, it went down. Did the circumstances around them change? No. What changed? It was their attitude. Folks, I want you to learn about the power of two things that I want you to, to listen to me today about. Clearly, it's about mindset development, then skill set development. Mindset, your attitude, and then skill set, your aptitude, and both of them can be developed. It's about growing your thinking and then growing your actions and pursuing excellence in whatever you do. I'm encouraging you. What I shared with Ford was about mindset development, first changing the culture and getting a positive attitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. You've heard that before, but let me tell you, the only difference between a good day and a bad day is your attitude, because stuff is going to happen. So you've got to have a shift in your attitude, and that's something you can control. You can't control what happens to you. You can't control what happens around you, but you've got complete control over what happens in you. And that's your choice. you got to work on your attitude. you got to make a commitment every day to have a positive attitude. Now, how do you get there? Well, you got to take some steps because life is very challenging. First thing you hear in the morning is how many little kids got snatched, how many people got killed last night, how many fires there were, how many planes crashed. Oh, woe is me kind of news. That's what you hear. That's why you got to make a commitment. Every day, first 20 minutes of your day, before you turn on the news, you find something positive, something inspirational, something encouraging that will help you listen to positive music. Go to my website, willajolly.com slash free. We've got free music, free videos, free audios, free materials to inspire you. Listen to my radio show in the morning. Read one of my books in a day, but get something good in you. If nothing else, dust off your Bible and read Proverbs. There's one for every day of the week, but get something positive to work on your attitude. And then, second thing you want to do every day is you want to say good morning to at least 10 people 
people. Good morning. Oh, and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, some of those people you say good morning will say nothing back to you. Some of them will grunt and say, huh, what's good about it? But you got to say it still 10 times. Let me tell you, I say it 10 times every morning. And sometimes people are even rude. When I was in New York City and I said it, they looked at me like I had two heads. But I still said it. Why? They said no, nothing back. I don't know. But let me tell you why I did it. Because I learned that I'm speaking not for them, but for me. The more I speak it, the more I feel it. And the more I hear that it's going to be a good morning, the more good mornings I have. And if I have a good morning, I'll go to a good afternoon. If I have a good morning, good afternoon, I have a good evening. I'm going a good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And I do that seven times, I done had a good week. And do that four, four more times, I had a good month. And do that four more times, I had a good quarter. And then I make it happen and have a 12 times, I had a good year. And it all starts with saying good morning. Say good morning to your friends and family and loved ones. Say good morning to people you don't know. And if they say nothing, it's all right, because it's about you working on your attitude. We're going to help you live your dreams this year, because your best is yet to come. So this is Dr. Willie Jolly. We'll be right back after this great break. because of the fact that I know that it is possible to turn your setbacks into comebacks and even turn your setbacks into greenbacks. How many ready for some greenbacks? One of my books, Turn Setbacks into Greenbacks, talks about the fact that if you're going to turn your setbacks into greenbacks, you got to do some special kind of thinking and you got to do some special kind of things. When I wrote the setback as a setup for a comeback book, I interviewed people who had had setbacks. Some of them were celebrities like Tina Turner, Lee Iacocca, John Travolta, Les Brown, Wally Famous Amos. But the ones that changed my life were the ones who were not famous, but the ones who were like us, everyday workaday world people who had setbacks and turned them into incredible comebacks. Like the young man I interviewed had a small business, two small children, had a setback, went bankrupt, lost his house, lost his car, ended up living on the street. Many thought that would be the end of his story, but he came back and built a company called Daymark, one of the biggest merchandising companies in the country, $240 million a year company. Or how about the ninth grade math teacher I interviewed, Mrs. Doris DeVoe. Many of you in the D.C. area know her name because she was a school teacher here in Washington, D.C. And she was a ninth grade school teacher, math teacher, and she loved what she did. One day she went to the doctor's doctor I told her you have terminal breast cancer. You got six months to live. She said, I can't die now. I got too many children to teach. I got too much to do. They said, we're sorry, but you got six months. She sat there for a few more minutes, gathering her thoughts. Then she looked the doctors in the eye and said, I just made up my mind. I'm not going to die. I'm going to live at least for 25 more years. They said, ma'am, the tests are conclusive. You got six months. And they sent her home to die. Well, I'm excited to say that lady lived for 33 more years. And when I interviewed her, she said, tell the people in your book that I might have cancer but cancer does not have me. She beat cancer four times. She said, tell them one other thing and write it like I say it. I say, yes, ma'am. She said, tell the people in your book that doctors can give you the diagnosis, but God gives you the prognosis. Or how about the lady going up the corporate ladder, got almost up to the top of the corporate ladder, and they fired her, and she came back and bought the company. You're going to have setbacks, but a setback is nothing but a setup for a comeback. You got to have a positive attitude, again, mindset, and then you got to work on your skill set, develop an attitude of excellence. My book, Attitude of Excellence, focuses on the fact that I helped Ford because we helped him start by changing the attitude with the first round of, of programs we did in 2006. But in 2007, after we got them to be uh, stabilize their workforce, 2007, my goal was to help them to create world class vehicles in 2008 to create a culture of excellence. By the time we'd gone from skill set development, mindset development to skill set development, Ford was positioned to be able to reject a government bailout. What is it that's going on in your life that you've been wanting to do? Well, I'm going to give you four steps, four steps that can empower you to start to change your future. I know there have been some challenges. You might have gone through what we call the deadly or the to disastrous D's, a deadly desire, uh, the deadly uh, disease that somebody in your family might have, you might have lost someone, or a divorce, or downsizing, or a disease, or some other issue we call the, the deadly D's. But let me tell you something, you can turn these D's 
keys into dynamic destiny because you can change your thinking with four steps. Step number one, vision. Scripture says without a vision, a people perish. But with a vision, a people will flourish. you got to have a vision for your future. Walt Disney was asked in an interview, they said, what was the secret to your success? He said, I had a big vision, even when I went through tough times. I love the story about Walt Disney's brother Roy on opening day of Disney World. After Disneyland had been created, Walt Disney started working on Disney World in Florida. He bought Swampland. He filled it in. But then, four or five years into the process, he got sick. He died. On opening day, a lady came up to Walt's brother Roy and said, isn't it sad that Walt didn't get to see this? His brother said, sad? No, it's because Walt saw it that it's here. What's the vision you have for your future? Where do you see yourself? I love the speech by uh, McConaughey when he won the Oscar. They said, what was the secret to him becoming such a good actor? He said, I'm chasing me in 10 years. Where do I want to be in 10 years? Where do you want to be in 10 years? Get a vision. First, you got to have a vision. Number two, you got to make some tough decisions. You got to make some tough decisions if you're going to turn your setbacks into comebacks. First decision you got to make is you got to make a decision to stop hanging around with negative, small minded, itty bitty, petty thinking people. And unfortunately, some of them are in your inner circle people who you love. And they love you too. They're not trying to be mean spirited, they just happen to suffer from possibility blindness. You got to leave them alone and let let them be themselves all somewhere else. What do you say when people in your, in your, in your family are like that? You learn to love them from afar. <laughs> Let them be negative away. The other decision you must make is a critical decision. Is, is, is when you have a setback, is this a setback period or a setback comma? Now, when I was in elementary school here in Washington, D.C., we learned that a setback period is uh, end of the sentence. No more to be said, but a comma is end of the sentence. Now, not end of the sentence, but pause, transition, more to come. So when you have a setback comma, you got more to talk about. There's more life. Do you see it as a setback period, end of the sentence, or setback comma, transition? Third, you got to take action. A vision without an action is an illusion. An action without a vision is a mere confusion. But a vision and action put together can give your life a transfusion. Scripture says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Notice it says, if you take this action, then you'll get this blessing. And finally, you must have great desire. You got to want it bad. You got to want it bad. Imagine if you would, one person wakes up around midnight, says, I want a soda. I want it bad. Goes to the refrigerator, no sodas. Walk back to the windows and, and snowing. They go back to the refrigerator, look again, no sodas, settle for a glass of water, go back to bed. Second person wakes up around midnight, says, I want a soda. Walk to the refrigerator, no soda. Walk to the window, open the shades, it's snowing. Put on a hat and coat, gloves, galoshes, walk a quarter mile to the corner store, but it's closed. Come back home and settle for a glass of orange juice and go back to bed. Third person wakes up around midnight, says, I want a soda. Walk to the refrigerator, no soda. Walk to the window, open the shades, it's snowing. Put on a hat and coat and gloves, galoshes, walk a quarter mile to the corner store. It's closed. Another half a mile to the grocery store, closed. Another mile to the gas station, but it's sold it out. But that person keeps walking and trying until they get a soda. How bad do you want it? I was on a radio show one day and I gave that analogy and the host said, eh, Willie Jolly, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Who else, who gonna go out in a blizzard for a soda? I said, you know what? That's right, it's ridiculous. But only those who attempt the ridiculous achieve the spectacular. I'm saying to you that if you have a vision for your life, you make some decisions for your life, you take massive action for your life, and you have great desire for your life, you can turn your setbacks into comebacks. Work on your mindset, develop your skill set, attitude, excellence. Go to willyjolly.com slash free so you can get some free materials. And also visit walkwithwealth.tv, walkwithwealth.tv, where we interview those who've already done what you want to do, who've created wealth out of nothing. And you can learn from them how they, too, have been able to overcome their setbacks and turn them into comebacks. I am grateful for the opportunity to be able to talk to you today. And I want you to know that your best is yet to come. I close with this little story. And the story says simply, I was a new speaker, had no books, no tapes, no radio, no radio, no television, no credentials to be a speaker, struggling to pay my bills, struggling to keep the lights on and the phones on. Finally, somebody said, we want you to come to Orlando, Florida and give a speech. I went to Orlando, I gave the speech. They gave me a standing ovation, then they gave me my check. I was ecstatic. I finished looking at the check and put, the, put it in my pocket and went to the airport to fly fly back here to D.C. On the flight, I'm feeling good. And then halfway through the flight, I pulled that check out a second time 
and I got depressed because I realized that money was already allocated. It was already spent before I even got to the bank. Anybody ever been there? Got your, before you get to the bank, your check is gone. I start having a pity party with myself right there at B-22. And all the gentlemen across the aisle must have sensed I was struggling. We started talking. He said, young man, let me ask you a couple questions. And we talked, and then he said something that changed my life. He said, young man, how old do you think I am? I looked him up and down. I said, sir, I think you're about 60. He smiled, took off his glasses, looked me dead in the eye. He said, young man, I'm 88 years old, and my best is yet to come. In that moment, everything shifted in my head, because if an 88-year-old man could have the optimism to believe that his best days were in front of him and not behind him, what did I have to whine and cry and complain about? And I got back home and got on the phone and started making sales calls. And if people say no, I'd say next. they say, I'm not interested. I, I, they'd hang up in my face, no problem. And 20... Five years have gone by, and I've been inducted in the Speaker Hall of Fame, named one of the outstanding five speakers in the world, best-selling books, television, radio, but it's the tip of the iceberg. And I came here to talk to you and say, without a question in my mind, your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. You have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon you, can't refuse it. You didn't seek it, you didn't choose it, but it's up to you to use it. You must suffer if you lose it. Give account if you abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but an eternity is in it. It's been a privilege and a pleasure for me to be in your presence. Have a terrific day, and remember, your best is yet to come. When I hear the word setback, I think of all of the people who had had setbacks in their lives and went on to incredible comeback and understand that the word setback is really a setup for your comeback. See, the word a setback is set up for a comeback. Most people focus on the setback or the comeback, but the real focus should be set up because this is just a setup for your greater good and your greater great. The word comeback. When I think of the word comeback, I think of Ford Motor Company. I think of companies like that who had had these disastrous processes that they were going through, but made a decision, and all of the people over the years who've come back, who are comeback kids, and there's a comeback kid in you. You just gotta make up your mind that this is not the end of your story, and that it's comeback time. It truly is comeback time. When I think of the word vision, I think of scripture. Without a vision, a people perish. But with a vision, a people flourish. Every great achievement starts with a vision. First is the inner, then the outer. First is the thought, then the thing. If you can get a vision for your future and believe in that vision and then go to work on that vision, you can inc achieve incredible results. But it starts with a vision. Without a vision, a people perish. But with a vision, a people will flourish. It's time for you to flourish. This is Dr. Willie Jolly.